Ohm's law is one of the fundamental rules for electricians. So many things work in accordance with Ohm's law, this simple and easy to use calculation. Yet many new starters can have difficulty at first grasping what is happening. But understand Ohm's law, follow this very simple video and you will have mastered one of the foundations of our trade. There are always many questions about Ohm's law. How do I use it? What's happening in the circuit? I can't picture what's going on. And are there any simple examples to help us to understand? This is a simple circuit example. Nothing complicated, just a single resistor. If you can visualize what is happening here, then you can answer exam questions on Ohm's law. There are three quantities of interest to us. There will be a voltage applied to the circuit, AC or DC, and we will assume DC voltages in this video. The resistance is whatever the load is, and this is often represented by an oblong resistor symbol. A current will flow around the circuit, and this is dependent on the values of voltage and resistance. This is the Ohm's Law Triangle. With practice, it will become permanently locked into your mental toolbox. You will never forget it. We say that the current flowing around a circuit is directly proportional to the applied voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit. Directly proportional means that as the voltage increases, the current increases. And inversely proportional tells us that if the resistance increases, then the current will go the opposite way and decrease. This is how I visualize Ohm's law. If we have a barrel of water, a weight and a tap, what can we learn from it? The barrel contains a quantity of water, representing the electron pool, the electrons that will flow around the circuit when it is turned on. There are other electrical theories, because the boffins are still arguing about how electricity works, but I prefer the conventional flow model of current flowing from positive to negative. It's easy to follow and explains things very well. Imagine the voltage as being a big weight on top of a plunger. More voltage, more weight. The resistance in the circuit is represented by a tap here. Open the tap and there is less resistance to the flow of water. Start to close the tap and the resistance will begin to increase and restrict the flow of water. And I, for amps, is the current flowing in the circuit. Think of it as water flowing in a river, the river current. The same is happening to the electrons. There will be current flow. The electrons will flow around the circuit. The voltage, sometimes called the potential difference, is the pressure that is acting on the electrons, the water in this case. Resistance is represented by the tap. With the tap wide open, there is little resistance to the flow of water. In a circuit with small resistances, there will be little resistance to the flow of electrons in the circuit. But close the tap a little and it is harder for the water to pass through. Increase the resistance and the electrons cannot move through the circuit as easily. And the result of the voltage and resistance settings is the amount of current that flows. Big voltages and small resistances will result in big current flow. In this example here, we have 12 volts forcing the electrons through two ohms of resistance. The result is 6 amps of current, and we will look at these calculations very soon. The same 12 volts is acting on the circuit, but now we've doubled the resistance from 2 ohms to 4 ohms, the same as closing the tap slightly. The result of this is that the current will halve to 3 amps. Ohms doubled, amps halve. In this third example, the voltage has stayed the same at 12 volts and the resistance is now increased to 6 ohms. 
the tap is being closed even more. So what happens to the amps, the current? Because the ohms increase, the amps must decrease again, so even less current flows. What happens if we use the same resistance values, but now we double the voltage from 12 volts to 24 volts? Let's look. With the same 2 ohms of resistance, when we double the voltage, we double the current, the amps. This is the same as the tap being wide open and the mains water pressure being turned up high. More water is going to come out of the pipe. The same 24 volts, now with 4 ohms of resistance. The current is now 6 amps. The tap has been closed slightly and there is more resistance to the flow of water. And this slide shows that the resistance has been increased to 6 ohms and correspondingly the current reduces to just 4 amps. Think of the ohms and amps relationship as being like a seesaw. For a certain voltage, if one side goes up, the other side must go down. When ohms go down, amps go up. Pause the video and take a moment to understand the numbers. Get to grips with this and you will understand Ohm's Law. This is the Ohm's Law Triangle and the three easy calculations that we can make from it. Voltage is current multiplied by resistance. Resistance is found by dividing the voltage by the current. And the current, or amps, is the result of dividing the voltage by the ohms. Looking at an easy example, if the voltage is 15 volts and the resistance is 3 ohms, calculate I, the amps. Ohm's law tells us that the current, I, is voltage divided by ohms. So 15 volts divided by 3 ohms gives us 5 amps of current. A good way of checking your calculation is to realise that multiplying the two numbers on the bottom row will always give the number on the top row. Keep this in mind as we work through several more calculations. 5 multiplied by 3 is 15 on the bottom row and we also have 15 on the top row. The numbers are correct. A useful method that I often use is to draw a blank triangle as shown. Then fill in the numbers that you already know from the question and the triangle will show you which calculation to make. Look at this example. We are told that the voltage is 20 volts and the resistance is 10 ohms. We are asked to find the current I. We have the green Ohm's Law triangle. Draw an empty triangle and fill in what we know, 20 and 10 in this case. The pink triangle is showing 20 over 10. This is the calculation that we should do, 20 over 10, a division operation. So we have 20 divided by 10, and this calculation is also shown in the blue box. This results in an answer of 2 amps. Check your answer. 2 multiplied by 10 on the bottom row is 20, the same as the number on the top row. Let's try another. This time... We are given the resistance as 60 ohms and the current as 4 amps. Now we must calculate the voltage of the circuit. Draw your empty triangle and fill in what we know, 60 ohms and 4 amps. Look at the pink triangle. 4 and 60 are both on the bottom row. This cannot be a division, so it must be a multiplication, also shown in the blue box. 4 multiplied by 60 is 240. So the circuit voltage is 240 volts. Now this one. The voltage is 230 volts and the current is 5 amps. What is the resistance? Fill in what you know into the pink triangle and we have 230 over 5. This is a division, 230 divided by 5. Put the numbers into your calculator 
and out pops the answer, 46 ohms. Double check. Multiplying the bottom row together equals the top number. Yes, it does. 5 times 46 is 230. Over to you now, and 12 easy calculations for you to make. Pause the video and attempt an answer for each of the 12 practice calculations shown on the next slide. And the slide after that will give the answers. The table shows 12 examples of Ohm's law. Calculate the missing value in each case. Pause the video and then check your answers on the next slide. Here's the same table with the answers shown in red. Hopefully you found all the correct values. If not, don't worry, just repeat the exercise again, watch the video again and practice until you understand. In a future video, we will move on from this simple one resistor example to series circuits and parallel circuits, where things are completely different, but still easy to work out if you follow a method. We hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've tucked a little more knowledge into your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify, be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.